Hello everyone and welcome back to the Task Force Admiral demo. We're gonna use this video to look from the perspective of the torpedo bombers. I think I'll split the aircraft up. I'm gonna do one from the torpedo bombers perspective, one from the dive bombers perspective, and perhaps even one from the fighters or the combat air patrols perspective. So we have at least one more video to go of this demo scenario after this. Anyway, we're here in our torpedo bomber, an American one, probably the Devastator. And hopefully we don't get jumped by any Japanese Zeros. Looks like our fighter escort is breaking off to maybe get the bogeys off our six, or get the bandits off our tail. We got the Dauntless Dive Bombers above us. Yeah, you can almost feel the breeze of the air rushing through the cockpit. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we got some zeros. What's this guy? Oh, he's flying inverted. We happen to see a MiG in a negative 4G dive. Well, we came in on a six above him. Well, if you were above him, how did you see him? Because I was inverted. Bullshit! Oh, we're getting shot at here. I think he's going for the other one. <laughs> Again, it's those us, uh, those weird high G pullouts that the the fighters do. It's a little bit strange. Again, I am not an expert on aerial combat in World War II, and I'm, I'm not a pilot in any, any sense of the term. And there's a reason why I don't play DCS because I would suck at it, <laughs> and I don't really have the time to learn about it. You know, the flight models and all that. And, but. Uh, I don't know, some of the maneuvers the fighters pull off just look like you would be just twisting and warping the airframe or just ripping the wings off of your aircraft. <laughs> it's like, yikes, he's trying to take that thing into a climb or something. <laughs> so they pull up hard and they kind of drop back and make another run or something. I don't know. Maybe that's how they did it, maybe not, but something in me tells me it's a little bit odd. Like, that was more realistic. That guy just sort of banks off, you know, pulls up and banks off to the right. I don't know. I don't know. And speaking of which, recently, at the time I'm recording this anyway, there was a uh, crash of, I think, two T-6 Texans at the Reno Air Show, or not the Air Show, the Reno Air Race down in Nevada. And that, that's pretty rough, I will say. Of course, the T-6 Texan is a famous, you know, kind of uh, a trainer, a training aircraft for pilots during this time. But yeah, I, and I believe that Reno Air Race is like the last air race that is being held, at least in the United States. I've been to air shows, but never an air race. I do have a, a buddy down there who actually was attending that. Not as a, uh, he doesn't fly or anything, but he is attending it as a spectator. And, well, that's that's pretty rough, you know. Every time there's a mishap in an air show or an air race, it's 
so we'll see about that. Anyway, we're diving down here to make our attack. And hopefully before this game fully releases or around the time it, you know, it fully releases, I'll have read, read up more on aircraft carrier warfare. I got a couple of books that I need to buy that are some, you know, really good, from what I'm told, really good histories of carrier warfare, basically from the beginning up until like the early 2000s. All right, we are about to enter the outer screen. We're gonna take some flak here. Okay, the carriers are up ahead. The Shokaku is directly in front of us. The Zuikaku is kind of at our 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock! What happens at 11 o'clock? Actually, I do kind of wonder if it was common for the tail gunner to accidentally shoot up the, <laughs> the vertical stabilizer of the aircraft like, you know, Henry Jones Sr. did in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Sean, I'm sorry. They got us. All right, who are we going for here? Going for the show or the zooey? Take your pick. thing in, I guess pick all you want, because the Mark 13 torpedo we're carrying, <laughs> there's a good chance it won't work very well. <laughs> I guess we're going for Zooey Kaku. How does he see this this antenna that's right in front of our faces? Looks like it would block this. I think it's like the, the aiming scope or device or thing or whatever the heck this this black tube is right in front of us. Okay, I think we dropped. And yep, we dropped. Oh, yep, he couldn't pull out of that one in time. And that's what happens. All right, let's see if, uh, yeah, we dropped. The torpedo is no longer with us. Let's see if we can find it. Can we see it? Now the Zooey Kaku is, uh, yeah, she's turning hard to port. Yeah, I think she'd probably dodge them. I do hereby reckon she dodged them all. I'm not seeing any wakes, any bubble trails from the torps. Yeah, I'm not seeing them. Man, even reading up on just how you know, torpedo bombing was accomplished. You know, the basic doctrine for how it was meant to be done in, in, during the war. It still seems like it would be hard to like, you have to figure out how much lead to give the target since it is moving, of course, and. Oh yeah, this is the, uh, it's definitely a devastator because it it has no like uh, bomb bay for carrying the torpedo in it underneath the, the fuselage. It just the torpedo just hangs there in the open air. So yes, this is definitely a devastator, as would be used during this time. We are crossing the wake of this cruiser. Because, you know, we need more holes in this airplane. Yep, 
You know, the Navy's going to make you pay for the damage to this aircraft. Well, I'm not... I didn't see any torpedo explosions against the hull of those ships and we got zeros on us. Again. I guess that plane went down. Maybe it wasn't a zero. Or maybe the pilot just got tired of living. So now our pilot is <laughs> kind of jinking back and forth and I don't know what he's doing. Look at the holes we got in this plane. Yep, look at that, another zero. Uh, never mind the bullets. They make the plane lighter, don't you know? Although it does kind of ruin the aerodynamics of the aircraft, so... <laughs> what you uh, lose in weight, you also lose in... Um, I guess what you gain in speed from the weight loss, you also lose in uh, fuel efficiency. <laughs> Not as aerodynamic anymore. Let's take a look. Well, Shokaku got bombed, that's for sure. And, oh, she might have. Yeah, that looks, that looks like a torpedo right there. Looks like she took one. One torp. How about Zui? No, no, no. Oh, wait, no. That might be one right there. That's uh, hard to tell. No, those are bomb hits. No, uh, maybe one torpedo. I didn't see it explode, though. All right, anyway, on to the Kates. You can always tell those valves we got the fixed undercarriage.
Oh, oh, look at this guy. Oh, we got shot it down. All right, well, switch to another one. Maybe this guy will actually make it to the American task force. Well, I wonder if that fighter is coming for us. Doesn't look like it. Oh, those guys might be, though. <laughs> right? Ideally, you want to come in from their 6 o'clock high. Right? So you can kind of dive down onto them. Open fire with your 50s. Another thing to say, also mentioned by a number of uh, Japanese aviators after the war, is that the American fighters had 50 caliber machine guns, which was a, a nice good balance between, you know, good stopping power and, you know, having enough ammo to actually fight it out in, in a dogfight. Where is... where are they? There they are, ahead of us. Well, we are making progress and we don't have anything immediately on our, t on our tail. There's the outer edge of the screen. There are the carriers there. Which one will we pick? Behind door number one, you have the USS Enterprise, the most famous and highly decorated ship of the US Navy in World War II. Behind door number two, you have the USS Hornet. Famous for the Doolittle Raid, of course. Nope. Oh. He's shooting a bit high. Gave us a haircut with some 50 caliber bullets. Alright, come on, we'll get their closing on us. Are we going for Hornet or Enterprise? Well, they shot down my wingman. That's okay. He had an honorable death. Okay, that's Hornet. Yes. Enterprise. Yep, looks like we're going for the Enterprise. See if we can see our torpedoes. There they are. Oh, this is looking pretty good. We might get a hit. There she is. I think that's ours. We'll just say it's ours. It's got our name written all over it. Oh yeah, this is a hit. Yep, right amidships, and here come the bombers. Any more torpedo hits? And... 
Well, this might hit. Nah, she's turning to port. Ah, dang it, we just missed. Well, we hit her once. Props to the captain and, and whoever is at the helm of the Enterprise. You know, they got some big holes in our aircraft here. <laughs> got a hole right there in our aileron and in the other one as well that wings just about ready to come right off that's all right that'll just buff right out no problem And he's climbing back up. I think he's headed home. Not that you'll really have any place to land, but yeah. That well, looks like the Hornet took another bomb there. All right, let's see how we did. Enterprise is listing. She took at least one torpedo. Oh, maybe two. And none on her starboard side. Okay, so Enterprise took two torpedoes anyway. Looks like they all escaped the bombs. That's impressive. Hornet. Oh, took two torpedoes. Nope, maybe three. Wow, they must have counter flooded because that thing barely looks like it's listing. <laughs> well, good job for them. All right. I will see you for the next video.